In this video, I might get a little bit more personal, but I wanna talk about the bass that changed my life. And I know that that might sound a little bit weird. We're talking about fishing tips most of the time on this channel, but hey, if you wanna to get to know me a little bit more, there's actually two bass that really altered my life if that makes sense. But real quick guys, before we get into the video, I'm sure you're wondering why I have gloves on and that is right now at Fin Fishing. If you buy one of the USA made sun shirts, you can get a free pair of sun gloves. This is a $22 value. That's a great deal. And again, these are USA made sun shirts. It is the best way to help support this channel. All right. Let's talk a little bit about these particular bass. And like I said, there are two of them. Now, some of you may have heard the story about this first one that I'm about to say over on Bass Fishing HQ, but if not, I will tell you. Now, back in 2019, uh, tournament bass fishing was my life. And as a matter of fact, I wanted to become uh, a Bassmaster Elite Series Pro. It is something that I had been working towards for a couple of years. I believe that this was the fourth year. Yeah, this was the fourth year that I had been fishing the Bassmaster Opens, trying to qualify for the Bassmaster Elite Series, which is like the top of the top when it comes to bass fishing. Now, I started off that year pretty well down on Lake Toho. I think I got a 47th place finish, which 47th may not sound great to you, but out of 217 guys, I think that was obviously like a top 25 or 26 percent of the field and then i went on to the very next tournament on lake norman and i got 13th um, in that particular tournament which jumped me all the way up into i believe the top 10 in points and in the opens if you finish in the top five in points at least during those couple of years if you fish in the, finish in the top five in points during the year you move on to the bassmaster elite series so that was my goal and so this brings me to the very first fish, which the third tournament of four was held on Lake Champlain up in New York. And this is a, a fishery that I had been to in the past. It's a fishery I'd done well um, tournament wise. And I was actually really, really looking forward to this tournament more than any of them because I absolutely love New York and I love Lake Champlain. So long story short, um, the first day of the tournament, this was the only time I was ever late to a weigh-in. And I was boat number four that day. I totally misjudged how long the line would be to get into the ramp. There was only a two-boat ramp. The lake was low. Not many people were launching elsewhere. And I totally miscalculated it, and I ended up being late. I, di I didn't end up, end up going out until uh, like over boat 50 or something like that. But I had a really short day that day. The wind was howling that day, and it really made me, I was just antsy all day because of that start. And I had a, a, a pretty poor bag. I, I only caught like, I think I was like at 12 or 12 and a half pounds. I was way down the leaderboard. Out of 200 some boats, I think I was like 157th, you know, like, and so moving into day number two, I had a much longer day. I got to the boat ramp like three hours early that day. Like I was prepared and I just knew I needed to settle down and go fish for the fish that I had found. Now, I started the day fishing one boat dock and caught a limit off this one boat dock. And it wasn't a big limit. It was probably about 12, 11, 12 pounds, but it just settled me down. And it was so quick that like, if you tournament fish, you understand like getting settled down really helps. And so then I started fishing more boat docks, which was what I wanted to do more the first day, but that wind wouldn't really allow me. And I was slowly over the day called up from that 11 ish pound mark all the way up to about 16 and a half pounds but I had a small fish in that bag. I had one about two and a quarter, maybe two and a half pounds. And I'm like, man, if I can catch a, a five, six pounder, that's gonna jump me up, way up. Like, I'm, this is really gonna help dig me out of this, this hole that I created. And this actually brings me to this very first fish. And I, I go into this little marina and I am pitching with a Cinco. I, I have a Cinco on a bait cast rod. It's a Texas rig Cinco, and I'm just skipping it underneath boat docks with like 15, actually it was 16 pound line that I was using at the time. And I get bit by a fish, I set the hook, and out comes the biggest largemouth I've ever seen at Lake Champlain. It was well over six pounds. It was a massive fish, and the water is gin clear, so I'm sitting there watching this fish as I'm bringing it in. And in the back of my mind, I just like knew there was something special 
about this fish. I'm like, if I can get this fish in, like I just, I just knew that something was about to happen. And so I wrestle this fish all the way to the boat. I get it right up to the boat and in the opens, you can't use a net. So, and I don't ever have my co-anglers grab fish because I, I just, I don't, I don't want them to. Like I'm perfectly fine grabbing their fish, but I've just never had co-anglers grab my fish. Um, and so anyways, I'm reaching down to grab this fish and I scoop up this largemouth, six, six pounds and I belly it, right? And, and almost probably 98% of the time you belly a bass like that, as you're kind of lifting him out of the water, it's almost like that fish freezes up. You know, if you've ever seen the way that a bass or, or a shark, when you flip a shark upside down, if you've seen it in the ocean, they just kind of like are paralyzed or I don't even know how to describe it. Well, bass, a lot of times when you belly them, they just freeze up for a minute. And I go to grab that fish and as soon as I start lifting it out of the water, he like makes us one big kick and he slips out of my hand. I wasn't really worried, but he kind of slipped out of my hand and he made this one last dig in the boat. And I couldn't believe it, but that fish dug right underneath the boat and I have my rod like this. And all of a sudden I pull the rod back up and that fish broke my line. It's probably the only, one of the very, I've broke line before, but it's always on the hook set. I've never broken a fish off that simply dug at the boat and popped off. And I lost this six pound fish. And the reason that this fish was so important is because I ended up finishing the year. I had a really good, I had a pretty good tournament. I finished like in the 30s, in the 30s at the next one at Douglas Lake. But during that particular year was when the big split happened with Bassmaster and Major League Fishing. And they took down to like 16 spots on the opens. And guess who finished 17th that year? This guy. This guy right here. Actually, I tied with Greg De Palma that year. And if, if I had one point, if I had just one point, I would have actually gone to the Bassmaster Elite Series. And Greg De Palma won the tiebreaker. I think he's still fishing the Bassmaster Elite Series now. And so the big thing about that year though, was I wasn't really super upset because at the end of the day, I knew that I hadn't done my job. I like my job in that year was to get in the top five in points. And I still finished 17th overall. So I didn't really do my job. It just so happens that the Bassmaster and Major League Fishing had this huge split where they reached in and grabbed a bunch of guys. So in my mind, I'm like, you know what? It's, it is what it is. I wasn't that upset. So fast forward to the next year. And I start off the year on the Harris Chain Lakes with a, a 25th place finish. That was a miracle in itself, that particular tournament. I go on to the very next tournament and I get a fourth um, in that tournament. Um, place finish. And so I jumped way up in the points at this, at this point in time, I was like, I think fifth place overall in the points. And then we go to the James river and I didn't have a great event at the James river. I finished somewhere in the seventies in that tournament, but because you can fall so much in the opens, I was still, I can't remember. I think I was in 10th place, but I can't remember exactly going into the last tournament, the fourth tournament, I was in like 10th place. And I knew that if I could top 10 this event, I would have a really good shot at qualifying for the elite series. And the very first day I go out on Lake Oneida, which is where the last tournament was. And I catch a, I catch a bag, I catch a good bag and I love Lake Oneida. And I, I was really looking forward to this tournament. And I catch a good bag. I had like just under 17 pounds and I'm sitting in fifth place in the tournament. And so one of my buddies back home, like he had all, all everyone's tournament stuff and in an Excel sheet. And he's like, dude, if, if you stay right here, you're in, you're in the elite series. And I had one day, I had one day and all I had to do was go out there and catch a decent bag. And I was going to be fishing the Bassmaster elite series. And I go out on this day and first of all, there was wind out of nowhere. The first day of that tournament was perfect. The second day of that tournament, they weren't even calling for that much wind. And it was just absolutely blowing like crazy. And the one main area where I caught some really big largemouth had completely blown out. And I wasn't that 
upset about it because I'm like, you know what? I've got other fish. I've got smallmouth. I went out and did my smallmouth thing. And that was one of the toughest tournaments that I ever, tournament days that I've ever had in my life. And in that tournament, I weighed in, the last day, I weighed in four fish for eight pounds. So the fish that haunts me in that particular tournament was the one I didn't catch, number five. And again, the reason being is that I was the, at the end of the year, when they tallied up the points, I was the first guy out of the Bassmaster Elite Series yet again. Two years in a row, first guy out, and I don't even, I don't even know how to explain it, but I was just like, man, that, that stinks. And, you know, going into the very next year was 2020, that awesome year that 2020 was. And the Bassmaster, the, the Opens got delayed that year. And I had been doing freelance marketing for several companies. And the first thing that happens when stuff like 2020 happens is marketing budgets get cut. And I lost a ton of income that year. And I was I knew that 2020 was going to probably be my last year to fish the Opens if, if something didn't happen great, like winning a tournament, because I... I didn't have, like, I was running low on cash. Like, I'm just gonna be 100% honest with you. And so I fished the opens and I basically swung, after the first tournament, I pretty much swung the fence to try to win a tournament. That was my goal, to try to win a tournament and it just didn't work out. And so long story short, in 2021, I did, I did me and my wife, we decided not to fish the opens. I wasn't gonna be fishing the opens. And that is actually when I decided to start putting my effort into YouTube. And so I had kind of posted here and there on YouTube at the time. And that's when I, I, I started with Bass Fishing HQ and I'm like, I'm gonna post two or three videos a week and see if I can't grow this thing. And by the end of 21, I was actually able to quit my full-time and part-time job that I had at the time and, and go full-time in content creation. And so all of that is to say that if I had caught those, that one big fish, that six pounder, and if I had caught a fifth fish on that last day, there's a good chance that I may have gone into the Bassmaster Opens, I may, or the Bassmaster Elite Series. I may have tried to scrounge up some sponsorship dollars, and I know now that that would have just not been a good idea. Like, that wouldn't have been a great idea at all. And, you know, I could have lost a ton of money there. And I still kind of have the hopes of one day making it back to the opens and becoming an elite series angler. And we're gonna try that, I think at some point. But the truth is, is that I believe that everything happens for a reason. And I believe that that is why I lost that big fish and why I didn't catch my fifth fish that day is someone had a little bit of uh, an eye on me. And God has only blessed me ever since then. So anyways, guys, I just want you to know um, about those stories. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might like more of my fishing tip style videos. I'm going to leave a link for them right here, and I will uh, see you guys tomorrow.